In this video, you're gonna see a fun case study of a member who was struggling with lures who immediately found a lot of success. Hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong out here with a member here, Jason. I saw a post in the community and he was mentioning just a frustration with, with getting action on lures, do a lot of light bait fishing. Yes. And the lures has just not been consistent. So had him come up here. We're gonna go test out some lures. We'll just walk through, first of all, how to, how to find the fish and then also how to rig and retrieve the lures properly to make sure to maximize action. I haven't fished out here in a while, so I'm not sure where they are. So we are gonna have to go find them first and then hopefully catch some. We'll keep you posted along the way. And yeah, so the fish should be along the shoreline. You can see some little bait ripples right there. And it's basically the bait fish are probably going so up and down the shoreline. Working this whole little edge yeah, right it's here. probably about six or seven feet here. And then right at that shoreline, it goes from about three feet up to the shore. And those fish, snook, so trout, and right, reds will be going right, right along the edge. Right in that little trout yeah. okay? So cast retrieve and hopefully we can find some. So starting off, I went with the Moonwalker, the topwater plug, and then I had Jason start with the Mulligan. It's a subsurface paddle tail. His has better odds if the fish aren't aggressive. Mine was good for finding the fish, and here is the strategy we use. A lot of times with this topwater, they'll hit and miss, and so I'll be able to at least be able to assess to see if they're in the air or not. Over eight, nice. But if I if something hits and misses mine, just something cast to it. Something, like cast there, it. yeah. Something's there and it's hungry. Yeah. There we oh, go. Fish on. fish on first cast. <laughs> first cast. Were you making that up? You're out trouble <laughs> artificial. Look at that. <laughs> it don't get no better than that. Oh, that's funny. Is that a trout? Uh, yeah, here man. We, go. we got a spotted trout. Well there done. That's, a, that's a nice cast. trout too. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'll okay. took the Mulligan LeBrons right. on a Haas Helix. So we kept fishing that shoreline. I tried several lures and really Jason was the only one getting action. He just continued throwing the Mulligan. He was getting strikes. They were getting off. The fish just really weren't very aggressive and decided to change things up and go to a local bridge so I could show him how to use the Prawn USA lures along the bottom just to get some action. Now, on days like this where the current flow isn't doing much, these Prawn USA lures are my most trusted when the bite's slow, just get around deep structure. And all I did is I just showed him this retrieve and shortly after, he was the first to hook up. Here's one. Oh, nice. Here's one. There, oh, wow, look at that mango uh, snapper. Oh, no, this is that something. He's almost as big as the lure. <laughs> So we continued fishing this bridge. He had now caught a couple fish and now I need to get on the board. So now I'm trying to catch fish and he catches another one right in my face. It's like, oh, there's a better fish. Nice work. Well, <laughs> we didn't go to the bait store this morning. Well, that's right, who needs live bait, right? <laughs> So we moved to another nearby bridge and that's finally when I got on the board. I started getting some grouper and it was just a good bite. We got onto a lot of fish. I, I was changing lures around. I went to a pompano jig for a little bit. Then I went to the, the prawn junior just to increase the amount of strikes we got, right? The smaller lure can get more fish and we just caught a bunch of fish. It was basically just this simple retrieve with the prawn USAs bouncing on the bottom, flat out get strikes. So if you're looking to get in some action, whether you're fishing from a boat under a bridge or from on the bridge itself or the shoreline near bridge, you know, get some hard structure on the bottom, bounce this prawn lure. That is the best way to go out and just catch a bunch of fish, even when the current flow isn't very good. After just a bunch of small fish, no big ones, we started, let's change things up. And so we went to a nearby grass flat. This is the outside edge of a grass flat. It's about four to six feet of water. So we switched from that half ounce jig head with the prawn to a quarter ounce jig head with the Slam Shady 2.0. Here's some tips from that spot. You can probably just barely see the different shades. So like there's a little white hole there. Right, so the, the, the holes is what we're looking for or the little darker spot? The both. So ideally the dark spots is grass and then the white spots is sand. Gotcha, okay. And the, they like to hang along the edge of the grass and the sand. So they'll, they'll hold in the grass, just regular grass, they'll hold there too, but the, the highest odds is on the edges of grass and sand. Fortunately, just as we hoped, the fish were there, and as usual, they're responding to these paddle tails. As long as they're really retrieved down close to the shoreline, you say, I just missed one, and Jason, Jason hooked up, and we were getting strikes immediately. As soon as we got out to the, the deeper edge, that's where the fish were, and, and we were catching fish, just fish after fish after fish. Uh, all these, uh, so Jason had the full style lure. This is the 2.0 with the paddle tail. And then I had the, the nub style. So I had the same lure, same jig head. My tail was bitten off uh, midway through. And so I just kept using it. 
And in this one, you can see that it's just a little nub. But overall, when you need to go out and just get some action, target the deep edges of grass flats close to channels. And if you're in an area without grass flats, then look for some deeper oyster or really any other type of structure. Should be some good fish there. So lastly, we had about 30 more minutes to fish before we had to go and really wanted to get a drag puller, a big redfish or, or a big trout up on the shallows. And so we tried this. I was using the tweaker. And Jason was using the mulligan, both rigged on, on helix hooks. And unfortunately, we just did not see much action. The, this area did have a bunch of mullet there, and all the mullet were gone. So we unfortunately had to pack up before the big fish. All right, so we just got back to the ramp, and we caught a bunch of fish. We were trying to get a red or a snook, and they just were not cooperating today. The water was still not quite high enough for us to get near the trees. But we still caught a bunch of fish. We did good. Including a double, double trout. A, a double trout. Can't beat that. And, and the artificial. Yeah, and uh, the fact they caught a, a fish the very first cast, and then was making yeah. me look bad. I think I, you caught like four or five fish before I caught any. Yeah, we're, we weren't keeping track, but yeah. Uh, I, was keeping, I was keeping track. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it basically proved that it's really about finding spots. He was uh, having trouble with lures and he was rigging everything right. It sounds like this spot selection. And you do most of your, your fishing from shore, yes. which is tougher. And, and it's basically just another lesson, a reminder that if we're struggling, obviously check the rigging, check if anything is, is, uh, is done right and the lure looks good in the water. But most importantly is just move spots if nothing's happening. Find uh, the fish. Yeah, find, find the fish. Find the fish is what the big thing is, you know, so. This is about three and a half hour trip or so, and, and we, we hit up probably seven or eight different spots. Um, no, we, didn't, we didn't catch fish in all of them. Then we're biting, pick up 10 minutes-ish, yeah. pick up, move to the next one. As far as lures, it was basically assortment. We did the paddle tails for the shallow, um, the jig heads, right jig head with the 2.0 for the little bit deeper water, five to six. And then for the bridges, just these prawn, you know, prawn USAs with the, the half ounce uh, or even more. I had a, a one ounce for, uh, for a bit. So just have all these depth levels ready, find some uh, zones with fish and hopefully catch some big ones. I'll say the only rigging thing that I noticed on your setups was just the, the casting distance, the line. The little heavier line yeah. really hurt me casting far yeah so yeah he he's his rod had 15 pound braid and uh and a little bit of probably like an eighth of an inch gap yeah. between the line and the, and the rim of the spool and switched over to one of my rods and the cat his cat your cast were going 30 40 feet further for sure which is a no big question deal. No, no doubt about it so, yeah. yeah so check the gear any any questions about that i'll put links down below to some of those uh those gear recommendations but uh yeah great time thanks for coming out hey, glad, thanks for having me glad we we're able to catch some fish if you have any questions about the trip or anything that we talked about leave a comment down below otherwise hope to see you again soon